Okay, next up we're going to talk about the mental triggers. And so these mental triggers, this is really important stuff because these are the, this is the cornerstone of, of how we actually conduct these launches or, or, or sort of the psychology that's going on because there's a lot of mental triggers that are built into our brains. They, they don't change. You, you get these mental triggers right and you're going to be able to use them over time. It's not like these fade away. They've been with us for hundreds of years, thousands of years, and they'll still be with us thousands of years from now. I mean, if you want to look at sort of evolutionary psychology, you can you can start to figure out why some of these exist, um, but it, it's, it gets pretty crazy. Stories is um, one of the mental triggers that, that really is the foundation of product launch formula, because in essence, the sideways sales letter, taking the you know, telling the story over time with that sideways sales letter is really what you're doing is you're, you're creating the story, an overall story of your marketing that goes throughout your entire launch. And that really is what pulls people in. So we have, we've been trained for thousands of years to listen to stories. Nothing's more engaging than a good story. And it's almost like warm milk and cookies. It's just like people just, you start telling a story and they just relax and they sit back and they take it in. We've been trained that way for thousands of years. This is the way really knowledge was initially passed down was is through stories and it's still very very powerful for influencing people. You want to make your launch event based. So this is something some people struggle with. It's like you'll see with our quick launches there often there's some story around it like I'll share the story of a of one of my quick launch quick launches was a tax sale or the romance sale I'm going to show you those those were based around some external event a, a wedding in one case um, a tax surprise in the other instance but you can make if you're doing a new a launch for a new product it can be an event just because you have a new product coming out. So, I mean, people, they love events. They get pulled in by, by events. They feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. And people love to have that. That's this part of um, this feeling of significance that we have. And going through an event together, that's a core, what, what you're starting to do there is that when you can provide an event for people to go through together, what you, I mean, that's the basis of ritual. And rituals are literally the most powerful experiences that we have. Rituals are unbelievably powerful. And when you have an event-based launch, you're starting to tie into that, that, that sort of ritual instinct. Community is incredibly powerful. This is something to remember. We act like we think the people in our community are supposed to act. And virtual communities are really, really strong. So if you, you can literally create a virtual community and sort of create the so-called like the, the rules of engagement, how people in that community are supposed to act. And if you can do this in your marketing, actually create a community and then create this this expectation in the community that people act, maybe they'll maybe the people okay, okay, you're part of this community, and the people in this community buy my product. It can be not quite that simple, but that type of thing can be really, really powerful in your launch. We'll get to some examples of this. Social proof. Social proof is the idea that we all look to other people for clues on how we should act. And this is, you know, the classic example I like to give is you're driving into a town, um, there, it's it's dinner time. You're hungry. You've never been in the town before. Maybe you forgot your iPhone, so you can't look up the uh, the restaurants. So you have no idea which are the good restaurants and which are the bad restaurants. There's a restaurant on the right side of the street that's got six or seven cars in front of it. There's one on the left side of the street that's got like one car in front of it. Which one are you going to go to? Most people will go to the one with the six or seven cars in front of it because those people must know something, right? That's basically what social proof is. We look for clues on how to act by looking for how other people are acting. If you can show your prospects that they're not alone, that other people are taking action and buying your product and having success, then you know, you're know you way ahead. It's really powerful. Scarcity is when there is less of something, people are going, or they're inherently going to want it more. 
they will want something if they're just just by virtue of being less of them you know if there's some fancy um or you know beanie baby you know if there's if there's some fancy beanie baby but it's hard to get we see this like all the time at christmas time where there'll be some uh some the it toy or you know the toy to have and all of a sudden there's not that many of them people will just go crazy for them they'll go to crazy lengths to try to get that toy so scarcity is incredibly powerful and event-based launches they naturally lend, lend themselves to scarcity because it's an event it comes and it goes and once it goes it's gone so there, there's scarcity there's an inherent scarcity involved social proof and scarcity work really really well together because when there's um, when there is social proof it proves that there's demand so then uh, so so inherently that feeds into scarcity and when there's scarcity well there must be there there's inherently social proof because if, if something's scarce then a lot of people must be going after that thing right okay authority people will follow others in authority so I mean this is why a doctors wear a white coat it's because as soon as they walk in the room we respect that white coat you can establish huge authority in your launch just by giving away good content good pre-launch content people are going to assume that you are an authority and that will give you more power in your communication with them anticipation there are a few things that capture our attention and our imagination more than anticipation does we all look forward to events we all look forward to birthdays to holidays and you know to 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 sporting events this really pulls us in in the US we have the Super Bowl the Super Bowl is a is the football game the only football game all year long where it takes there's a two week build up to it there's two weeks in between the conference championships and the Super Bowl one of the big reasons for that is to build the anticipation this is how people get pulled into your launch by anticipating what's coming next and by looking forward to what comes next common enemy it's amazing what people have done um, when there is a common enemy I mean they, they they march off to wars and they stand in a line of bullets getting shot at them because of a common enemy often in marketing will will sort of fabricate a common enemy whether it's the IRS or lawyers or or some organization in your niche or whatever you can often build up a common enemy and that makes the sale a lot easier because people will bond with you through that common enemy love to have proof in our launches if we can show how people have bought our product in the past and had success and we can show people that proof that is awesome controversy really gave you know that grabs people's attention it's like watching a car wreck people just love to watch controversy so you can often talk about controversy in your launch and that will grab people's attention commitment and consistency is that basically people want to act consistently with how they've acted in the past there's all kinds of ways we can develop this commitment and consistency interaction and conversation people would rather talk than listen and they'll pay attention to a conversation a lot longer than they'll pay attention to a lecture so if you can make your launch um, feel like a conversation and it's easy to do that with blogs where you're getting comments back and they're interacting with each other that grabs people's attention you know a lot of proclamation formula is about grabbing people's attention and holding their attention so you can actually deliver a sales message to them reciprocity it's basically if you give something to someone they're going to want to give it back to you uh, or they're going to want to give something back to you and so during a launch we're generally giving great material great content great pre-launch material away and this naturally builds up the reciprocity trigger then so you've been given to them given to them given to them they're going to be more inclined to give back to you and often that what they're going to give back is an order they're going to buy from you you don't want to be predictable so the more you can build in some surprises and some unexpected turns in your launch the better because that it's just novelty and that captures people's attention it keeps them from being bored likability 
uh, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. So if you, the more likable you are throughout your launch and your pre-launch materials, the better off. Credibility. Uh, during a launch, you can put out, you can publish material that establishes massive credibility. This is very similar to the authority. And, uh, you know, this is the, the, so many times people are disbelieving. They go through, I mean, they get so many sales messages and sales pitches each day that they have their BS detector at maximum most of the time. So they're, they just don't believe people. And so during, the beautiful thing is during a pre-launch, you have the time to basically prove your credibility by giving away great content. Celebrity being interesting. This is pretty similar to uh, the whole surprise and, and being novel. You want to be seen doing unusual things. You want to be seen as different. And this is all easier than you would expect. You don't have to be very different at all, just a little bit different. And I'll tell you, just by virtue of the fact that you're, you know, that you want to start an online business or build your online business that you're that you're studying product launch formula makes you different it just doesn't take much to be seen as different so many people have very very boring lives and so you just do something a little bit different and all of a sudden you're 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 seen as being very interesting and as if you publish online you basically automatically become a celebrity the reason why, this, the word because is a very, very powerful word. word. Even if you're, and you know, this is why we're doing it, it's because of this. So if you can give a reason why throughout your launch, throughout your sales copy, and really every piece of your pre-launch content is really in effect a piece of sales copy, it can be really powerful. So tell people why you're doing things, and the reason does not have to be great. The classic example from um, the book Influence by Robert Cialdini is uh, um, they did a test. This was a you know a social science test where they had people try to take cuts. Uh, people were waiting to make copies at a copier, and there's a line at the copier, and they had people walk up and just ask if they could take cuts to, and go to the front of the line, and then they measured how effective that was. And uh, people, you know, a lot of people, you know, I can't remember what the numbers were, but maybe it was, and, and the, the actual numbers are completely irrelevant, but maybe like 50% of the time they were successful. And then they had them go up and they say, they, they made the same request, can I cut in front of you to the front of the line? Be and they would say, can I cut in front of you because I'm late for class and I really need to make these copies for uh, my professor or something like that. And as soon as they put that because in there and gave a reason, all of a sudden the the compliance, their effectiveness shot way higher. Numbers went from maybe like 50% to like 90% or 95%. It was significantly much higher percentage of success just by giving a reason. Then they actually did the same thing and they, they tested with a reason, um, but it was it was a it was a lame reason, it was a lousy reason, and they said, um, hey, do you mind if I cut in front of you because I really need to make some copies? So there was no real reason there whatsoever. But because they said, they used that word because, and because, because they gave a reason, even though it was a, a very weak reason, not a very good reason at all, the compliance was still almost as high as when they gave a good reason. So the reality is you just need a reason why you don't need a good reason reason why. Okay, next up is competition. If you can build in competition, this is another thing that grabs people's attention. So if you have com people competing for something, very, very powerful. The takeaway sale, where this is where basically you're just, um, you're, you sell from a very powerful position and it's sort of, you can take it or you can leave it. I'll be just fine either way. And when you do a takeaway sale like that, it's it's naturally very attractive. The more you act like you don't need something or someone, the more they will pursue you. Next up is simplicity. You want to keep your, I mean, the launch might seem complicated at first from the outside, but you want to keep your messaging very, very simple. The more simple you can keep your messaging, the more powerful it is. 
Specificity or concreteness is very similar to simplicity. The more exact you can be, the better. For example, ivory soap is 99 and a quarter percent pure. It's not 100% pure. It's not even 99% pure. It's 99 and a quarter percent pure. That quarter percent being so specific, that makes it more believable than if they just said it was 100% pure or if it was 99% pure. If you're going to help someone lose weight, it's better to have them lose 7 pounds in 6 days than to have them lose 10 pounds in a month. You want to, The more specific you can be, the better. If someone took your system and made money with it, it's better if they made $9,032.17 than if they made $10,000. Because basically people, if they see something that looks like you rounded off a number, then they just think you're not being precise, that maybe you're taking some liberties with the numbers. So the more specific and concrete you can be, the better. And finally, we have emotion. And if you can get someone's emotions involved, and this isn't necessarily an easy thing to do, but if you can get someone's emotions involved, then it makes it a lot easier to influence them. It's just the way it is. If someone gets really excited about what they're doing, it's a lot easier to influence them. It just puts them, the state of mind they're in when they are excited is just, um, it's just easy to influence. Frankly, you know, this is a tough one to do. I haven't seen this pulled off too often with success, but if you can pull it off, well, boy, it, it, it's really, really powerful. Okay, so that was just a quick run through of the, uh, the mental triggers. And again, we're going to be walking you through launches and showing you exactly how these are done.